I'm back. Day number two. Tuesday. Let's go Elysium. Nothing on the front page rings a bell. Strange. The door is closed. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on somewhere inside. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. Beauty, don't abandon me in all this ugliness. The door does not care. All right. Fair enough. Oh, it's hustling and bustling down here. Kim's got something to say about it, too. Kim, my man. Good morning. I guess I take this flashlight off. Put on my trusty bag. Take a look at the photo. web of blue lines stretches across the torso of the hanged man. From the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time the lines intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. It still kind of looks like a map of the stars in the night sky, but something's not right. Who are you? Gone. What's the meaning of this tattoo? For you to discover. You've gotten as far as you will without assistance. Someone closer to the victim might know. Yeah. Good enough for now. Kim, my guy. Morning. I've got some good news. I took care of the body. The thought of him decomposing in my MC wouldn't let me sleep. Good. Thanks. I'm just glad he's gone. We have other matters to attend to. The Union Muscle finally turned up, and they look rowdy. We need to talk to them. Why do we need to talk to them? Everything points to the Dock Workers Union. The belt used for hanging him. The circumstances in Martinez. My preliminary information. Which may, of course, all be wrong. But we still need to talk to them, and it won't be easy. What do you mean rowdy? I mean ungovernable. Martinez isn't exactly enthusiastic about the RCA being here. They prefer to be policed by the Union. These men here, men who drink beer for breakfast. There's talk of an armed wing of the Union called the Hardy Boys, who are responsible for said policing. I think it's them. There's so many of them. Maybe we should call in reinforcements? That would just escalate tensions. No captain would sign off on it. Solving one murder isn't worth a conflict between the RCM and the Debarders Union. In fact, even the death of two detectives might not warrant an all-out war. So let's keep a cool head, okay? He's not exaggerating about that mortal danger. Just calmly factoring it in. Your fists clench and your pulse rises uncomfortably. Let's roll. One more thing before we do. We don't have to talk to them immediately. We can walk right past them. Continue with our business. Good. A power move. Purposefully concentrate on something else first. They're in no hurry to leave. They think they own the place. Anyway, I leave that choice to you. Whatever you decide is fine by me. Sounds good, good sir. Well, let's take a look at the sign on the door from the other side. Summer door closed for the winter. Dishes are drying. Smell of chemicals and pine trees. Tomatoes are so thinly sliced you can see through them. An aroma of spices, alcohol, and tomato hangs in the air. A thin man is smoking below an exhaust hood, occasionally sipping from his mug. This must be the Whirling's cook. As you step in, he nods toward the table and says something in a completely foreign language. The only words you can make out Ah, Garanzi and Kubek. It must be his name. Garanzi. Garanzi Kubek. Sounds representative. Ah, Garanzi. Uh, 
I got some questions to ask. Don't know if I said that right. The man puts his cup down and replies something. His left hand drawing arcs in the air. Leo said you're friends with Manana. Is that true? The mention of Manana gets his attention. He smiles and delivers a whole slew of unfamiliar words and lively gestures. Then he falls silent again. They're friends. What's in that uh, borscht you're making there? The man says a couple of sentences in that strange language of his and then seems to wait for you to speak. Sorry, I don't understand you. Just one word. Sounds quizzical. Then he awaits your answer with his brow arched. Uh, no. Borscht need more vodka? Okay, so it's vodka that keeps the men happy and in good spirits. Clever move by the Union. Of course, vodka. Now that makes a very, very special borscht indeed. Turn it up and then ask for some yourself. Turning it up seems like a dangerous idea, honestly. The place is a powder keg. I'll leave the cooking to you. I have business. The cook gives you a long, inspecting look. Then shrugs, too, and seems to wait for you to speak. You've got some impressive pots there. He smiles and bangs his ladle against each of his pots in turn. I don't think I need anything else. Stay masculine. Can I help you? I found the victim's clothes in the trash container out back. How strange. I certainly didn't put them there. Maybe you don't remember putting them there. Maybe you were sleepwalking or in a fugue state. I think fugue states are more your forte, officer. Could someone on your staff have put them in there? Sylvie had the keys before I got here, and I can vouch for her. I can vouch for all my staff. None of us would tamper with the crime scene. Who else has keys to the trash container? The trash collection service, CS Municipal. I don't see why they would put anything in the trash, though. Ah, the elusive CS Municipal. I doubt we'll be able to track down who was sent here last and when. This will have to be one of those little threats that solves itself down the road. On Clinton Street, near the Boogie Street Diamond, a small truck rattles down an alleyway. It stops by a rusted trash container. Two men, their faces rough and swollen, jump out. They look at the container, despondently. CSM is written on their backs. Thank you, anyway. Thanks. Let's talk about something else. Yes. I've seen something here at the Whirling, Arte. Uh, thing I need to talk about. What thing? I saw a sign that said I couldn't go into the kitchen. Why can't I go into the kitchen? What are you, a cook now? That's none of your business. But there may be something pertinent to the investigation in the kitchen. He wasn't pan fried. He was lynched. What could the kitchen possibly have to do with... Fine. Okay. The kitchen is closed until 1 p.m. because the cook is working. You can snoop around after that if you must. Guess they didn't account for you waiting to ask that on the second day. Um, since I've already been in there just now at 7 a.m. Something else I want to ask you about, though. What? By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. Okay. I'm gonna sing karaoke here. Absolutely out of the question. You wait and see, cafeteria manager. Absolutely in the question. First we find a sad banger. Then we sing this place to shit. Goodbye. Just a moment, officer. And there's no public phones nearby? The closest phone booth is down the coast. Sorry for the inconvenience, ma'am. It's fine, I understand. Thank you anyway. Now then. Good day, ma'am. Everything all right? Please don't trouble yourself about me, sweetie. I was just hoping to make a call, but the Whirling's phone line isn't working. 
the union office probably has a phone, but I, I can't really get there or to the phone booth down the coast. And Gary's phone is dead, too. Wait, what's wrong with the phone line? The manager was vague about it. Why would he be vague? This is something to look into later. Ask God, maybe. Lieutenant Kitsuragi, may I ask what you needed to use the phone for, madame? To let the young woman who's house-sitting for us know that we may be delayed. Morel, my husband, and our friend Gary were supposed to get back by Monday night, but they're still missing, and I haven't heard from them. I was also hoping she'd heard from Morel. Oh, forgive me for not introducing myself. My name is Lena, my husband and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street, but I come here for tea when they're away. You hear that? Someone's missing. There could be foul play afoot. I love missing persons cases. That's right. Now skip the foreplay. Time to dive into the dark alleys. Start shaking down the usual suspects. You know, legwork. Doing some good will alleviate the hangover. At least you're of use to someone. Okay, I'll bite. Has your husband gone missing before? That's just it. This isn't like him at all. He always plans his expeditions so carefully. A cold breeze hisses through dense thickets of reeds. Something sweet in it, somnolent. A damp chill goes down your spine. When you look around, you're still in the whirling in rags. But you have more important things to worry about. What is this expedition your husband's on? Just some field work, sweetie. Morel is a highly trained scientist. He and his assistant Gary are studying an extremely rare species of insect. But they should have returned by now. They were just going down the coast across the water lock to set a few traps. He said they'd be back on Monday. What could be keeping them? The water lock. That was broken. Could this be it? Wait, who's this Gary person? You trust them? Oh, sweetie. It's nothing like that. Gary's as loyal as they come. I trust him with my husband's life any day. Well, the water lock on the other side of the coast is broken. They're probably just stuck over there. Oh my. What happened to the water lock? I really don't know. Well, whatever the cause, I'm thankful. To both of you, you've spared me another sleepless night. You're welcome, ma'am. I hate to ask, but if your investigation takes you to the other side of the coast, please do keep an eye out for my husband. This will surely lead to a cryptozoological mystery with that extremely rare insect. And if you see him, let him know Lena is waiting for him here at the Whirling. He gets so tangled up in his work that he may not know the water lock's been repaired. And it's cold out there. If I see him, I'll let him know you're here. When or if I get there. Oh, you're such a dear. Thank you, sweetie. Tell me more about moral. Looks, character, relationship. Oh, dear. I'm not sure where to begin. What does he look like? Hmm. Well, his expression is slightly grumpy, but his eyes are always bright and curious, like a small boy's. And his palms are quite coarse from all the field work, but he's quite gentle. It's always a challenge to describe the person you know best in the world. Let's uh, try that again. If I were to meet him on the street, what would I look for? Oh, well, he's a bit shorter than you, but with a larger frame. And he has longish white hair, usually a bit uncombed. You might say wild, even. The lieutenant pulls out his notebook and begins jotting down the woman's description. One other thing, he'll likely have all kinds of field gear on him, even if he's not out in the reeds, you know, just in case. How long have you been married? We'll be celebrating our 16th anniversary this autumn. Not the most numerically satisfying anniversary, but I like the less obvious milestones even more somehow. How did you meet? By a dating agency, I'm ashamed to say. I was looking to get back into the scene after recovering from my accident. And he'd just divorced. 
we hit it off, and, well, here we are. She's skipping over some important parts. Perhaps you'll find out more later. I think I have all the information I need. Let's move on. I hope I've been useful. Tell me more about this rare insect your husband is looking for. Oh, sweetie, it's fascinating. But I shouldn't bore you with entomological minutiae. The lieutenant gives you a sideways glance. No, I, I want to hear about the insect. Well, it's a phasmid, technically, but... Oh, yeah. Here comes the interesting... Where other phasmids imitate sticks or leaves, this one's a living reed. It disguises itself among the reeds here on the Insul Indian coast. Hence its name, the Insul Indian Phasmid. Perhaps you'll end up co-discovering the phasmid with us, officers. There's a touch of awe in the way she enunciated the creature's name. To be honest, this animal sounds like a cryptid. You wouldn't happen to be searching for some kind of gnome of Jeroma, would you? I smell pseudoscience, he's thinking. Not a big fan of that. It's simply elusive. So much so that most establishment zoologists doubt it exists at all. Establishment. I thought so. What makes you think the phasmin is around here? Well, some teenagers making out in the reeds saw one. They, they didn't know what it was, of course, but there was a brief article in a local newspaper about their encounter with a ghost insect that looks like the reeds. Gary sent us the clipping. So a newspaper clipping's all the evidence you have? Of course, most phasmid sightings turn out to be false alarms, but their description matched the Insul Indian phasmid perfectly. And they didn't even know what they were looking at. Is it dangerous? <laughs> Not at all. Why else would it hide itself so carefully? Does it have cool powers? Yes. It can blend in almost perfectly among the reeds. It's how it stayed hidden all these years. Centuries even. Okay, what's so special about this stick bug then? Oh dear. I'm afraid I'm not explaining this very well. It is very special. Morel can explain it all much better. I wish you could hear him describe it. Then you'd understand, I'm sure. You don't notice this about me, but actually, I've lost all my memory of the world and myself, and I have no idea what I'm doing. Surely things can't be that bad? You sense that she won't judge you, no matter what you say. Yeah, I hope you're right. I hope it's not too bad. You know where we are, right? Uh, we're dead, haunting each other. We're ghosts. Now, now. We are alive in a hostel called the Whirling in Rags. And the Whirling itself is in the city of Revishol. Mm-hmm, okay. Yes, and Revishol? Honestly, I don't really know anything about Revishol. Oh my, how would I even begin to tell you? Revishol is the most beautiful city in the world. We're fortunate to be here, you and I. I haven't seen very many other cities personally, but everyone says so. Revishol is a rare jewel. This city used to rule the world, though it has seen better days. Speaking of history, you know what year it is, yes? Um... It's a bad year in my late 40s or 50s. I don't even know how old I am. There, there. The year is 51 and spring has only just started. I'm sure there are better days ahead. The lieutenant studies you, rubbing his chin. I'm beginning to suspect that you might indeed be completely adrift in this reality, thinks the lieutenant. How can it be that bad? Never mind, we're in this now. Outside, spring rain seeps into the cracks in the walls and the cobblestone streets and into grated storm drains, all the way down into the sewers. Above ground, the first maybells blossom. I can tell that this is taxing for you, so... I'll just ask one more question. 
What regime are we living under? Cop. What mode of government? Cop. We're living under the cop regime. Actually, we are not. You could say that about almost any other nation, but not Revishal. Try one more time, officer. What mode of government? Damn it. I was really hoping it would be a cop world. Okay, well, let's see. Uh, we're governed by intelligent machines that perform calculations to determine the freest market. Everyone hustles and grinds like a badass visionary. Oh no, nothing like that, dear. Revishal is a zone of control led by an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. We have almost no government of our own. Certainly no machines. There's no government. How come there's cops? Oh dear. This is troubling. You really ought to know that, being one yourself. There aren't really any cops in Revishal, not in the traditional sense. The status of law enforcement has been a complicated matter since the revolution. But we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. Besides, I'm not the best person to explain the big things to anyone. She's scared now. She's realized you really are brain damaged. So, how would I do? You didn't do very well, dear. It does look like you're having trouble remembering things. History and places, remembering reality in a word, it's very odd. A sigh. The lieutenant buries his nose in his notebook. But maybe a fresh set of eyes is what the world needs. And while I'm no doctor, such bouts of amnesia are often temporary, so I wouldn't worry too much. She means this sincerely. Worrying won't do you any good. Who could tell me more? Someone more educated in sweeping matters? Maybe you should ask. No, I'm not an encyclopedia. I won't be a guide either. I'm a police officer. Uh, of course. Then, I don't know, someone rich maybe. Wealthy people are educated, though I don't know where you would find a wealthy person in Martinez. But thank you, sweetie. You did make me forget about my worries for a while. It's all for now, ma'am. Wow, you work hard. I do? Oh, yes. You hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out there, but you keep it real and provide. I guess I do, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a horse. A workhorse. For hard work. What hard work do I do, exactly? Look at yourself. You're a human pedometer. You must have walked 200,000 steps down cracked asphalt, mosaic, sand, and lelonium after you re-emerged. That is the sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh and people are evil. You didn't make it that way. And you won't let it break you. You ride. I fucking ride till I die, bitch. That's just what it's like. Life and death. But you got gills on your side, baby. Got those black papers with the faces of the innocents on them. You bring in the Franco Negros and the Solas. It ain't easy, but you do it. Day in and day out. You didn't make the rules, but you won't lose. You're a cop and a sprinter and a money printer. You could say I took some money from that Manana guy too. You didn't log that in as a donation either. You don't log any of that shit in. You're a straight rider. Oh, and, and then there's pawning stuff off to that suspicious Roy guy. Yeah, you're in the sales business. Shake him for shit and then pawn it off. Law officer style. I guess I've made some gills, sure. Sure, sure. And has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack or shoot yourself in the mouth? But you still hustle 24-7, ride or die. Now, ask yourself, are you rich? No, actually I'm not. That's right. You work harder than anyone. 
You almost rode yourself to the grave, and you're still practically a hobo. Why is that? System's broken. Boo hoo. The system is broken. The establishment is keeping me down. That's not the fuck here attitude you're used to. What is this? Why are you so poor? Fucking taxes, man. That's right. 100%. Fucking G-Man's got his jam-covered sticky fingers in your pocket. Stealing from you every time you buy, sell, walk, talk, fart, so much as sneeze. Okay, one thing before this dialogue keeps going. Um... I want to get that. Because I'm just wasting time not. Oops. What are my other ones? I'm kind of superstar. Really? Every time I sneeze? Every time you wipe your ass, they got their direct and their indirect modes of taxation. Sales tax, excise duty, extraction tax, alimony. One tax that doesn't even have a name. Plus there's the stuff people in other countries pay for. That makes them ask for more money from you. Here, total tax duties add up to 98% of all your money. No fucking way. Are you sure? Seems like a pretty big number. What are you not sure about? They're milking your nipples till they bleed. Can't you see? Aren't you sick and tired of having bloody nipples? No fucking way. I guess I'm a free market fundamentalist now. Here you go, hustler. Fight the righteous fight. Free the people. Keep it real. Keep it street. Keep foaming at the mouth furiously on the tax issue. Um... Let's take a look at this stuff. Mm. And uh, yeah. Okay, what was the one that I just got? Indirect modes of taxation. Um, this all doing for me right now all right I suppose that's all for the moment in here I think does this guy say anything I don't think he does at least nothing interesting it's all about money you know sure man I agree Bottle of rum that's been knocked over. Beautiful dark liquid is spilling out. All right, we got a few things to do before I talk to those dock workers. Gonna open that door for Everart. Talk to the lady at her boat. Hey, you. Good one. Yes? Hello? Who are you? Me? No one. I'm just the working class woman. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. What are you doing? Looking for something to read. Good, good. It is. I'm a policeman. I know you are. Good then. Mm -hmm. Do you need the help of a policeman? What with? Maybe your husband's missing. My husband? No, he's not. 
So, where could he be? I don't know. At home now? Out drinking with his friends? Working? Where is this going, officer? So, what I'm hearing is you don't really know where your husband is. Yes, but... I don't really need to know where my husband is. Not all the time. Wouldn't you like to? No. I can totally help you find your missing husband. Why are we still talking about this? I haven't lost my husband. She has the... The husband is totally lost. It's okay. Sh what? It's alright not to know where your husband is. Uh, nothing shameful in that. Who said anything about shame? Stop talking down to me. My husband is not missing. But he is. You can feel it. Or maybe it's something else then. Maybe your children are missing? No, absolutely not. Okay, so where are they? Are you a policeman or a nanny? I police whatever I want. Where are they? They are not missing, sir. You know where they are. They're at home. Smoking. Given the ladder of vices a chance. What if something horrible has happened? What if they're dead? What That's if the bad vibe you got before? What if something awful has happened? What if they're in the sewers? What? That's just my daughters are perfectly fine. They're with their friends down in Jamrock. There's nothing to worry about. They're almost grown up now anyway. They're past the age they need me protecting them from everything now. Maybe you're right. Maybe they aren't missing after all. Tell me something else. Hmm? Maybe your cockatoo is missing. I don't mean to disrespect, sir, but you are being a bit of a cockatoo here. For what it's worth, I agree. But cockatoos can't be stopped when they get like this. It's better to indulge him at this point. Ma'am, I was asking about your cockatoo. Is it missing? I don't even have a cockatoo. And guess what? What? Even if I had, it wouldn't be missing. All right, cockatoo not missing. Just wanted to make sure. Great. Uh, just one more question. What do you mean by me being a cockatoo? Nothing. Go read up on them if you're so interested. There's a great book in the bookstore. Maybe you should. What if the cockatoo is your astral captain? Or your heraldic bird? Actually, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Thanks for the tip. Wonderful. The store is open. Her hands move over the book covers. The tips of her fingers look rough, stained with yellow. It seems like she has spent a lot of time at work, smoking. An array of neurons fire up with joy. Bum her a cigarette, lest it turn to pain. Do you smoke? No, I don't. I know for a fact that you smoke. Why do you think that I smoke? I suspect I may possess supernatural abilities. No, you don't. Well, I'll say just give me a cigarette, but I don't actually mean this, I guess. That's my only option at this point. <laughs> I already told you, I don't have any. She's lying. She's goddamn lying. She has smokes. Okay, thanks. No problem. She sighs. That's all for the moment. I'll let you read. The woman before you nods and returns to her reading. Books say you must attain a Franken, Franco Nigerian hard body. At least that's something that I missed reading. Okay. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wirral related merchandise. An endless variety of source books, law books, and codices litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, second edition. There's also a large hardbound tome with intricate cover art, The Hunters of Catawack, Boreal Creature Compendium, and a Pick Your Path adventure game book titled Tales of Wirral. Cavern of Velkrog. Anything that really catches my eye? There's a box that says, Wirral, 
third edition mega setting supplements module. The side panel notes, a fantastic adventure board game, new maps and miniatures. A sticker on it displays 25 real. Nonsense for anemic Beano clouds. All right, that's enough for that for now. Take a look at the books. Where's the one These about the cockatoo? Are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. A couple of spook novels hide amidst all the detective books. Thrilling tales of spycraft and daring do. Crime fiction is a disgrace. An asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes of the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. Furthermore, they have no idea how hard it is to simply <laughs> remove a body from a tree. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you like a list of all the books found on the shelf? Sure. You see Dick Mullen on the job. Get Me Mullen. The stalwart adventures of Richard P. Mullen. Dick Mullen and the murder in the orchard. The sordid affair of Dick Mullen. A killing is declared. Dick Mullen in the murder house. The final case of Dick Mullen. An obvious lie. Dick Mullen in the clock tower. The ordeals of Dick Mullen. <laughs> Dauntless Dick. Dick Mullen's funeral pyre. The murder of Dick Mullen. Dick Mullen dies? Oh no. Turns out he faked it to solve a case. Are there any more? Yes. There's also the dame who did it. Farewell, my Mullen. Faking death seems to be a common trope in the Mullen series. The morbid tales of Dick Mullen. A dark tide turns. Tragedy calls for Dick Mullen. Another one with fake death. And, of course, Dick Mullen, the murderer. In order to catch a murderer, Dick Mullen must become the murderer. Come on. This is not the way real police solve crimes. The real police are some 20 kilometers away, sitting in an armored motor carriage. Come on, Chester. Tell the story again. Again? Man, I tell that one at least once a month. It's not that interesting. The fuck it is. And these guys haven't heard it. You see, Chester here. Gosh, why? A very fucking dangerous case, ain't that right, Chester? They almost got you that time. Yeah, sure came close. All right, so I was tailing this guy called Francis the Shoe. After all this, you still haven't found the answer to the one question that matters. Who is Dick Mullen? Who is Dick Mullen? Your attempt to grasp at the answer fails. It seems very close by, pulsating just out of reach. Damn. Hobo cop. Technically, you wouldn't be a cop anymore, but a hobo. That would mean game over for the cop chapter of your adventures. But who knows where the hobo part takes you? To the bar? The old l'assommoir? To the pier or the sewers? To Le Royaume, where for 300 years they interred the dead. You could plunder royalist crypts for long forgotten triple malt bourbon, then fight the Aramakan beast that lurks the bottommost sepulchres. The secrets of the city are all yours at last. Well, let's go. We got any books of cockatoos the on the shelf reads biographies of famous people browsing through all the books with all their names makes your head spin suddenly a particularly odd title catches your eye it reads 
High Speed Love, High Speed Love chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tournay races in history. Next to Irv's life story, you see a slim biography of an Occidental rock star called The Anti-Star. Next to that, River Sholian radio personality Guillaume Bevy stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real-life crime and ruining cops' days. I really must insist you buy one of the books. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse, though, but not too long. She understands she has erred against the customer and immediately corrects course. I'm sorry, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead. Take your time. Time is comma. Is there anything of note here? I would say... The great, great, I don't need to know anymore. Biographies of famous I'm looking for a book about a cock too, bro. Where the F is it at? Because it's starting to feel like it's not here. It's my last chance. This bookstore is not strictly Let's about look through the, the various books. You've the point of the book and many other Interesting. What books Hi, are here? Sir, please. No, bro. I can't have you end up like opening a police store. Next oh my god, lady. This bookstore is not amidst the various books. You've the point of the book. And How does this it work? Platitudes, wholeness. When it's up, it's your own fault if you're ill. Got it? This book's the anything book else? features chapters on topics such as how to find Magni. There's even a chapter on the ancient Serais tradition. This is just mundane garbage. Find Let's see something truly otherworldly. The throbbing in your head increases with every passing moment you gaze at this shelf. Suddenly, as if out of nowhere, a small green book becomes apparent. The title of it reads, Medicinal Purposes of the Pale. What's the pale? The book contains very little explanation on the matter. This knowledge seems to be taken for granted. What's this book about? The book contains descriptions of various pseudoscientific therapies, alternative medicines, and folk remedies involving the pale, also known as le territoire. For example, it recommends vigorously swatting one's naked body with a venic or hand broom made from the leafy twigs of a young birch tree from the near pale. Even better if you can find someone else, preferably a large man dressed in nothing but a towel, to thrash you while you're spread naked and helpless <laughs> on a cool slab. Sounds painful. It is supposedly invigorating and good for the circulation. What else? It also recommends consuming distilled spirits like vodka or whiskey that have been aged in the pale. Readers are instructed to cover these jars in a shallow hole just inside the pale and leave them there for 30 to 60 days, depending on the potency desired. What does this pale aged liquor do? Among other benefits, it is alleged to restore a damaged liver to perfect health. Probably get our hands on some of that. What else is in there? For general health and well-being, readers are encouraged to take regular strolls through the pal. Though a sidebar cautions readers to limit each stroll to less than an hour. These strolls promise to cleanse the mind of worries and the body of toxins, especially if the perambulator performs this ritual in the nude. Nudity figures prominently in a number of these prescriptions. <laughs> this is exactly what you need. I don't know. I don't want to be the party pooper, but this pale territory sounds sort of dangerous. Maybe you shouldn't walk in it naked. <laughs> Anything else to note? There's an entire section devoted to cures for men who are struggling to perform their marital obligations. I certainly don't need that. You close the book and return it to its place on the shelf. All right, I want to buy medicinal purposes of the pale. Indeed. Something about that book does seem to have spoken to you. Well, I hope it contains what you're looking for. Me too. Also, can I buy this map? Several maps. The maps look old and faded. Your uh, eye catches a map. Sorry, keep. Can I buy I'm these sorry, maps? Officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents. Why is it so cheap? That old thing. 
It's an out-of-date map of a tourist location that from when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago. They also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin-operated viewers, and designed the new street lamps. What happened then? They didn't get that far, for some reason. A shame the project never got going. I want nice to buy the map up. of Martinez. Always good to be informed of your surroundings. Thank you. Bye. Just making sure I didn't not check anything else in here. Okay, is this it? Is it going to be the sitting right here? Is brimming with worn paperbacks, uh, look through the books. How here, many books are here? Those snow crabs are worse than they sound. Not Not all. Man from here. Do any of the books call out to me? Nothing of no. Interest. Only silence. Okay. Uh, I guess there's no book about a cockatoo in here. Friggin' rip, man. Just came in here and wasted five dollars, ten cents. Come on. Ah. Ah. Wait a second. Gimme, gimme. That's what's up, baby. Must be it. The Royal Lion. Guillaume's kitten. This knocker will last a lifetime and then some. Unlock the door. You try to be as silent as you can. It takes a bit of rattling of the handle to loosen the bolt. Finally, the door unlocks with a small clack. Thoughts race through your head. Well, buddy, you opened it. No need to go inside. It would be rude. Good job. Let's go now. I'm sure there's nothing interesting in there. Only curiosity could account for stepping over that threshold. Maybe there's treasure in there. A white alligator. A fountain of quicksilver. As you hold the open door, you can feel the air moving. A little draft. A whistle. Go in. I think last time I did this, I went in and then reloaded the save because I found nothing of particular interest in here. But this time, screw it. Gimme, gimme. Small suitcase full of clothes. Guess they're staying over? Book titled The Hidden World of Walking Sticks Lies Open. You can almost feel the worth of the red sun on the flag. This is the flag of Rivershaw, the suzerainty. What's with the sun? This isn't just one sun, but there are little suns dancing around the big sun. This is the sevenfold sun miracle. What's the sevenfold sun miracle? It's an optical atmospheric anomaly the first settlers saw. Happens in cold weather. Six small suns around the big one. This complex halo phenomena is how old Revachol got its flag. It is but one of the many strange optic atmospheric phenomena of this wondrous archipelago. You're sure you once saw sun dogs in your youth and blue flares. Lieutenant, the old flag of the suzerain. Mm-hmm. The tenant is an old-fashioned guy. The flag doesn't seem to mind. It's just a colorful fabric with a sun sewn onto it. Like all feudal flags, it looks like a children's drawing. Night stand. Oh, his shirt. Whoever lives here admires fair hair. Admires fair haired fantasy heroes with big muscles. A row of mugs sits on the shelf. Each one depicts a human figure. A dark skinned woman grinning amidst mysterious symbols. A broad-shouldered man shoveling potatoes and others. A little ring. Though cheerful, the images on the ceramic make you vaguely uncomfortable. The images betray a lack of interest in human beings. They are merely unflattering caricatures. What do I mean uncomfortable? The owner of these mugs doesn't like people of other ethnicities very much. 
Typical asshole. This person is unhappy. The lieutenant picks up one of the mugs, then puts it back down with a look of disdain. I'm beginning to feel better about breaking into this man's apartment. Yes, your broken mug friend would feel very much at home here. The same humor, the same mocking lines. There's the missing teen soldier. Whoever lives here might have used the whirling's container to dump his trash. And now they've drawn the ire of the Union. The plot thickens, as they say. Perhaps you should break into apartments more often. Do you really think it's the same person who put the dead man's clothes in the trash? Who knows? I'm not expecting too much from this clothes in the trash lead either way. It might turn out to be some random local matter. But still, a nice coincidence. Smell of disinfected disinfectant in the room. Smells like chemicals. All right, that's all we got here. And how about this? These barrels are half full of rainwater. Take a look at the wall. This is a wall on the side of an apartment building. Why am I looking at this wall? 3% chance. Let's go. You have no clue. It's just a wall. So many walls all over Martinez. Yeah, makes sense. Ooh, bottles, baby. Give them, give them. Rue de saint Galin, roundabout, Nort. Keeps that apartment. What do we got here? Ooh, coat. There's a girl up there. Did she spill the paint? Inside the frame of a motorcycle and repair and the tools used to disassemble it. The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking Skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for Hep C. Let's get started with your blood type and go from there. Go where? Accosting a minor? Listen to your partner, pig man. Keep your grubby hooves off little old ladies. She's grown frustrated with her work and welcomes the opportunity to challenge authority in other ways. Keep looking off to the side. What are you looking at? She nods disdainfully toward the woman performing maintenance on the boat docked next to the pier. Hatred? Disgust? It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her steering. That a son her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Who is she? Probably the Wild Pines rep. We should talk to her. She's a professional negotiator, though. I have the feeling she will be very cooperative while telling us nothing. You should take the lead. Ask her unexpected questions, you know? Do your thing. Don't be afraid to get a bit wacky. Throwing her off is our best bet. Good idea, piggies. Run along now. Fuck her shit up good. Impound that boat while you're at it. I'd like to watch her swim back to us on. What are you doing to the wall? Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural. An aerial graffiti visible from low orbit. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. So you don't know what to write. Have you ever tried your hand at graffiti -o? When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff. Like pigs go home and Mono is here. We rarely see pigs round here though. Just union cats. And my name's not Mona, so... She wants it to be something true and total. I have an opinion on this. Want to hear it? Yeah. I love public art. Don't mind us. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks. I'm sure the inspiration will come to me now that I have an official RCM stamp of approval. You've lessened 
her desire to deface the building. Do you know anything about the recent murder? I ain't no snitch, pigstein. Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. Catch you later, Cindy. Watch your back, ungulate. You've got eyes on you. I thought she was old. Did they, did they change her? I think, like, I'm pretty sure they changed her voice. I'm pretty positive she had a voice before. Okay, that wasn't anything, I guess. Apartment number eight, mailbox overflowing. Did I just completely ignore this stuff last time I was in here? Seven dollars? Jeez, let's go, man. Postcard too? And the shoes sitting right here? Can I take those? Oh, okay, it's a penny inside of the shoes. Note reads, foreclosed by Martinez Realty Associates. A shift in temperature. The air chills around you. Dust settles on the stony floor. A former architect stands before a slice of window, a room plan in her hand. A cold wave has made the air in the building stand still and frozen, with temperatures falling down to minus 20 degrees Celsius. Her face is red from the cold. She's breathing on her fingers, clasping the plan. Traces of sadness are visible in her expression. The plan. Faint pencil lines on paper depict the same place, but a missing eastern wall connects the room with the neighboring apartment. Ideas for arranging the furniture have been jotted down. Ground yourself. It's clean and empty, with new tapestry embellishing the walls. A standard HB graphite pencil has fallen off a three-legged stool in the middle of the room. See below looks cold and winter gray. Someone has torn down the wall. An old grocery list on the table and checks. This is the door I was looking for. I like never spotted that until pretty late in my first playthrough. I just want to come up here and clear the area of any little collectibles, money, whatever. Bottles, let's go. Store gonna lead nowhere. Where does this go? The back room or something? Yeah. Right. Someone's been sleeping here recently. Hundred tiny feet scurrying beneath the grate. The rats of the city. Enough coal to last for several winters. Smells chemicals. Ooh. Jeans. Five bucks. Absolutely worth it. Piggies have learned how to saunter up staircases. I didn't think you could do that with hooves. But here you are. We cops don't like closed doors or unreachable perches. Or people having high ground on us. Yeah. You got me now. The dynamic between us has completely changed. That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. Is that heavy fuel oil? Red dyed heavy fuel oil, intended for exclusive use in government vehicles, to be precise. What did you think I was using? Aquarelles? Sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself. Back in Jamrock. 
She really did it. She's proud of it too. Fumes are bad for you, okay? Something to think about next time you're driving around in your pretty little picky carriage. Is that bed in the call room yours? Ooh. Not only have you found my address, you've discovered my biggest secret. I'm a coal miner. She does have eyes that seem to be smeared with coal. Really? You're a miner? Yes. I keep hoping a shaft will collapse on me, but somehow it never happens. Not the nicest place, but I guess it'll have to do. It doesn't have to do anything at all. Nothing does. Like me. Right now, I'm doing nothing at all. Cool. I have other questions. Shoot, piggy. See it's ya. Door is locked. Can't get in. 225. Above tarps flap in the wind. Forgotten hammers and nails of rust. I don't know if it's like a feature and I'm doing something, but sometimes the running gets buggy because normally you double click and then you start running, but like here, just a single click is running for me, so I don't know. But it throws me off because I start like double clicking to run and then I'm walking and then I just keep doing it because I'm used to it like right there, literally as I'm talking about it. Looks like there was more than construction here once. Decades ago. Okay, just to uh, be thorough, take this for now. No, I want to read this. Docking reserve for residents of Rue de Saint Galen, 33A. Room in the whirling is much bigger than this sloop. Shit has in the water, green plants in the comp surface. A striking woman leans against the cabin top of her sailing boat, smiling as you approach. Her green raincoat glistens with droplets. A silk scarf is tied around her throat. Good morning, officers. I'm Joyce. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. What gave us away? Nothing, honestly. I've said it to every drunk in town, and you're the first one who's responded. What is implied here? That you're a drunk? I'm not a drunk, I'm a police officer. Of course you're not. It was only a joke. I'm glad to see you here. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will, gladly. That is good to hear, madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you of his ultimate competency. How interesting. I wish you a swift recovery. In the meanwhile, you have my full cooperation. And the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. It's hard to get a read on her precise disposition. But she appears helpful. You're on a boat. Why, yes, I am. Not a lot of people on boats are there. Of course there are. We're on an archipelago. How else are you supposed to get around? What do you mean, archipelago? I mean, we are on Le Caillou, are we not? Uh, Caillou? I thought we were in Revachol. We are, and the city of Revachol is on the island of Le Caillou. Still haven't seen anyone else on a boat around here. I haven't seen anyone else drive a souped-up Coupri Kenema motor carriage either. Actually, that motor carriage has been specially issued to serve as a patrol and pursuit vehicle. It's for crossing long distances in the Greater Ravachol Industrial Harbor. It's not a toy. Neither is this. A toy, I mean. It's a machine for crossing long distances in the Bay of Ravachol, between the city and the islands. She's having a good time arguing against the law. Too good, perhaps. Get a license for this boat? Officer, I assure you I'm a highly qualified pleasure craft operator. The crowns of her teeth are porcelain, 
white as the boat's hull as she smiles. Qualified pleasure craft operator. So charming. Where's the damn license? Can I see your license? I just renewed its safety inspection last month, officers. It is completely seaworthy. In fact, it's taken part in not one, but two insulindic regattas. Even finished once. Still need to see a license, ma'am. Actually, you don't. Pretty sure I do. I police. It is a little known fact among those who police that the Wayfarer Act specifically denies the RCM the authority to demand anyone's operator license. Okay, forget the stupid Wayfarer Act. I had another question. About the boat? Does she have a name? The boat? No. It is called Cordelati 19 because that's the type of sloop it is. The word it feels strange. Such a beautiful boat deserves a proper name. A breeze ripples through the sails and tugs at your hair. Below, the sleek, fish-like shape of the hull parts the water. Beneath that, a resounding darkness. You're reminded of something. Or someone. Cool. But your boat really needs a name. Okay. How about Cordelachy 19? Why? Because it was manufactured in Revishal East by a company called Cordelachy, and its hull is 19 paces long. How about Dolores? Why Dolores? I just like the name for some reason. Hmm. Well, it means nothing to me. I think I'll stick with the factory name. But thank you for the suggestion. How do you like it? My sloop? I like it a lot. It's the eel's hips, baby. I'm enjoying this part of the interview. It has so little to do with the murder we're investigating. I really do, the lieutenant thinks. Is she thrown off yet? He's looking at the woman, assessing her. I think I have a handle on the boat thing. Good. Tell me about Wild Pines. What do you do? What we do? I'm afraid I don't speak for Wild Pines as a whole. It's a giant undertaking. So what do they do? The Pines' core competency is logistics. Container shipping, freight, that sort of thing. See those airships there, blinking? Those are the shipping side of things. And that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with energy, oil and gas exploration. Offshore platforms. Got it. Tell me something else. She nods. What can you tell me about the strike? Everything. Right up to, but not including trade secrets. Wait, what if I want to hear about trade secrets? First, you'd have to repeal the Emergencies Act of Trade and Elements. That gives me the right to silence. It's quite the octopus. An octopus? I will slay it. Good luck is only kept in place by the vested interests of half the civilized world, including your own. What the man means is that the Emergencies Act and the RCM both get their authority from the coalition government. But I am derailing us. You wanted to know about the strike. What's your role in this precisely? I believe the official title is Senior Labor Negotiator. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay the union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines counteroffer. And how are the talks going? They're not. That's the problem. The union stopped all negotiations a week ago after that awful lynching took place. Now they won't even let me into the harbor. There's a 2 meter 20 racist behemoth blocking the gates. Oh, you mean Measurehead. Yes, Jean-Luc Measurehead. How were the talks going before the lynching? Let's say I was not making the kind of progress I'd hoped for when I first arrived. And when did you first arrive? I arrived three weeks ago. Yes, in the middle of February. The bay was still partially frozen then. I prefer to do these things on site, like the RCM. But the strike began in December. I wasn't the original negotiator here. I took over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare, the union boss. Mr. Clare refused to speak with Gaumont despite concessions he'd granted the union in prior negotiations. This isn't the first time the union has gone on strike? Heavens no. There have been two prior strikes. Both times the union won significant concessions including overtime pay and a medical plan. This time their demands are more, I guess you could say, aggressive. What happened to this go month? Mr. Clare told him to 
how did he put it? Fuck off, midget. Go mont his shorter stature, you see. <laughs> okay then. Yes. Keep in mind, this is a negotiator Mr. Clare has worked with before. And who was more than fair with him and the union. It sounds like usual aggressive posturing. What are their demands? There are leaflets everywhere and banners. What did they say again? Every worker, a member of the board. I don't know what to think about that. Fortunately, they explained it. Every time the Wild Pines group makes a decision about anything, it needs the signature of each of the 2,200 workers in its Martinez terminal. Just so you understand, this is but one of 22 terminals owned by Wild Pines. Essentially, not only are they kings of the company, they are also kings of the 72,000 employees of Wild Pines Group. <laughs> That's pretty funny, I have to admit. They're having a blast. But how can they afford it? After four months, my assumption was they would prefer a more practical solution. What are you going to do? I'm not sure. Naturally, I assume that was just their opening position. A hard-nosed tactic with a side of mockery. But there's been no follow-up. Just the same nonsensical slogan repeated over and over again. And now... People are getting lynched, I hear. Behind the whirling in rags. A disastrous situation if there ever was one. Excuse me, from whom did you hear about this lynching? I first heard it from the boyer at the gates. The one whose very name advertises his aversion to work. I think he said it was, call me manana. This checks out. Scabs at the gate. Did you put them there? The scabs? You mean the huddled masses of Jamrock come to plead for work where the Union refuses to? If they were organized by Wild Pines or its affiliates, then it would be a company secret. I could not share it with you. Not right now, at least. What do you think of Everett? Everett Clare is a man of the utmost integrity. If you can say one thing about him, it's that he always puts the interests of the workers first. Really? Of course not. Everard is fantastically corrupt. I imagine he has a thick, viscous goo where you and I have blood. That's Everard, all right. He is the most corrupt individual I have ever seen, and I deal with men like him for a living. If there is anyone more venal, more irredeemably nepotistic, then it's his twin brother, Edgar. Wait, there are two of him? Yes. Edgar looks exactly like his brother, except for that lazy eye. He also talks exactly like Everard does, and when one's term as foreman is up, the other takes over. It's how they circumvent the term limits, you see, with a funny little switcheroo. While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much of their workers' dues. What about the union itself, outside the brothers' Claire? The Daybarders' union was once a perfectly normal institution. Twenty years ago, anyway. It must not have been easy to establish under the Emergency Act, but they did it. I can respect that. Organized labor at its best, as they say. Then something happened in the local chapter elections. The Brothers Clare came and transformed it into a... How do you say? A mob. The Debardeurs are a crime syndicate. Sad as it may be, we are forced to cooperate with them. Refreshingly honest, officer. The company has tried appeasing in the past, but I'm afraid our concessions have only emboldened Everard and his brother. And your opinion, detective? If I may ask. I'm a curious and talkative person, you see. Would you say the Daybarders Union is... I prefer not to have an opinion on these things. Of course, officer. One more thing. You said something happened in the elections? I'm glad you asked. There was a woman... The previous forewoman of the Union. She disappeared. Disappeared? Yes. On the last day of the local chapter elections, her daughter phoned in and said she wasn't running anymore. Or coming to work. Ever. End of story. Eerie. Downright haunting, if you ask me. The Wild Pines suspected foul play. But what could they do? It was a Union matter. The point of the presentation is... These kinds of things happen around the Clares. Watch out when you're dealing with him. 
Thank you for your concern, ma'am. We'll be just fine. That's all I need here. Let's uh, change the topic. Of course. How else can I help? What well, can you tell me about this lynching? Quite a few things, I'm afraid. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers. Of course, ma'am. We should have introduced ourselves. I am Lieutenant Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. And this is my colleague from Precinct 41, Detective Dubois. I'm afraid Harry doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope mine will suffice. Oh, and what happened to yours, Detective? Awkwardness washes over the conversation. The woman doesn't like this turn of events. Remember when my partner told you I'd recently suffered from an unusual medical episode? My lost badge is related to it. I see. So, are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? It's possible. After a night of heavy drinking, I lost all memory of my life and the world. Oh dear. I suppose this does explain some of the more curious turns in our conversation. As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional, but he is an officer of the RCM. Of course, I sympathize, but I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that badge. Hang on. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. How do I negotiate my way out of this? She's a negotiator. Just float a favor at her. Insinuate. Surely there's some other way to demonstrate our law enforcement credentials. I will be frank with you. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're going to want to see something very tangible. You're in, but expect her to drive a hard bargain. Like what? Reports from inside Terminal B suggest it's a hub for the local drug trade. This is an open secret in Martinez. The Union controls the terminal, so it goes to reason. They're profiting from this trade. The company has tried looking into this matter before, to no avail. Perhaps someone with your authority and resources might turn over the right stones, or... You can recover your badge. Though, if I may be blunt with you, it sounds like that may be a lost cause. Detective, a word in private before we continue. Excuse us for a moment, madame. This is not going quite as I hoped it would, Detective. How'd you hope it would go? Honestly, I was expecting you to use your unorthodox technique to keep her off balance, and you know, not volunteers to be her henchmen. Really? I thought it was going so well. This woman is running circles around us. She might have known about your misplaced badge all along, or she's simply an adept improviser. Either way, we've played straight into her hands. He doesn't let it show. But there is a limit to how much the consequences of your unprofessional behavior can cost the investigation. Sorry for putting us in this situation. No, I'm not going to apologize. i got to stop apologizing. What do you propose? That we don't investigate drug trafficking? No. If there is reasonable suspicion, we must investigate. Otherwise, she could claim we are siding with the Union. Or that we are on their take. We'd never hear the end of it. What I propose is, we ask her. Then we investigate, briefly, but do not share the outcome of this investigation with her. We tell her it's done and demand for her information on the lynching. Let's go back to her then. You're back. All around you, rain keeps falling down. On the wooden boards she's standing on and on the water around you. Neither do I. Very rugged. Good choice. Now, I suspect you had questions. Nothing like talking to pass a rainy day. Am I right? Okay, tell me about this alleged drug trafficking. It's quite straightforward. Someone is using Terminal B. Yeah, yeah, you Ingredients said that. For what, ma'am? Meth and dextroamphetamine, GBL and various synthetic psychedelics. Honestly, it might be quick to say what you can't make from the stuff. And you want us to investigate. Yes, but you won't get anything out of Evrat and the Dock Workers Union. Still, every chain has its weak link. Am I going to need bolt cutters for this? Unlikely, officer. I'm talking about the lorries. Once the ingredients reach Jamrock, 
They're distributed to a network of local manufacturers, well beyond our grasp. But in transit, they may be vulnerable. Perhaps you've noticed that a number of lorries are tangled in a traffic jam at the roundabout just now. Interview the drivers who are still hanging about. One of them might be waiting for a crucial shipment. Her irises are light green, like the river Esperance in bright daylight, upstream where it's clearer. I'll be explicit. If you find this driver, I will share company secrets with you. No coincidence that the lorries are stranded there like that, is it? No. We asked East Motor Track to raise the drawbridge. The road company is a partner of one of our subsidiaries. However, this is a limited time opportunity. Once the complaint has been processed by the trade committee, they'll have no choice but to lower the drawbridge, and the operation will continue. Thousands of liters of raw ingredients will pour onto the streets of Revachol. Not the east across the river, but the west. The vulnerable. The weary. Cold breath rushes in from the bay, making its way down the alleyways and potholed streets. From Martinez to Jamrock, in the traffic you hear the clinking of glass vials, concealed beneath tarpauling. Or is it just your teeth chattering in the cold? Fucking misery. A lot of it. It comes in from large Samaran factories in South Safre, Sigai, and Sin Yao. The literage they must get from this terminal alone must be oceanic. Well, at least this solves one mystery. What is that, Lieutenant? Why I had to call East Motor Track and beg them to open a drawbridge for me. I'd wonder since I first drove in on my motor carriage. I am sorry for the inconvenience, Lieutenant Kitsuragi, but we need them trapped here. This is a unique opportunity. I'm sure you understand. Okay, I made up my mind about the smuggling investigation. Yes? We will take the case, probe the drivers, see what it yields. Excellent. The court, it may Oops. come to nothing, or it may just blow the case wide open. I can keep the drawbridge up for a few more days at least. You should have the time you need. There was a really big pause after excellent, so I kind of assumed that that was it, and I hit skip. In the meantime, let me know if there's any other way I may be of assistance. By the way, I talked to Everett Clare. You have? And how did you like Mr. Clare? Finally. Time to choose sides. It's not important if I liked him, I was doing my job. Of course, Detective. Excuse me for implying otherwise. The RCM does not pick sides in this. I hope it doesn't come off any other way. Of course. And I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I'm not a corrupt verm myself. However, if you felt like discussing something, how could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be gossiping. Tell her she'll like you for it. He's helped me find my gun. Oh. That's so helpful of him. The lieutenant looks at you, and you can swear his jaw muscle is trembling. When I said be wacky, I didn't mean wildly, grossly irresponsible and damaging to the RCM. Unconventional police officers sometimes lose their guns. They then go around and tell people about this, to gauge their reactions. It's all part of detecting. Incredible. Simply incredible. And how is it going? Has this detecting produced a gun? Nope. Well, maybe he's not as helpful as you thought then. Is there anything else? Yeah, let's talk about something else. Of course, detective. Until then, is there anything I can help you with? Uh, do you know anything about these tattoos? That's the man who was killed. I'm afraid this is a discussion for once we've cleared the lynching question. Why? How is you looking at the photo tied to the lynching? Better not tie the fourth day to the bat's day on this. I hope there is something else I can help you with. She wants to answer the question. Protocol keeps her from it. Uh, you seem smart. I need someone to give me a lowdown on this reality we're in. This... Reality. 
It's related to the medical episode I have. Trouble remembering even the most basic terms of reality. Didn't really read that with the proper pacing. <laughs> ah, yes, the episode. Sounds like an acute case of encephalopathy now that I think of it. Don't be faith, madame. He functions perfectly well. He only needs a low down on all of reality. We may be here a while then. Ask away, officer. I'll help however I can. All right, we're in. I know these all look good, but begin with the first, okay? What is... Uh... Six kilometers southwest in the Valley of Dogs. Junior officer Chad Tilbrook takes aim at a rabid black dog licking its wounds in the grass. To his left, his partner, Emil Mullins, whispers, you heard what happened to Tequila Sunset in Martinez? Yes, he lost his mind, Tilbrook answers, fingers on the trigger. Don't worry, Emil. He pulls it out slowly. Slowly now. He'll find it again. We always do. What am I? You? You're an officer of the RCM. The Revachal Citizens Militia. Preciso Mundo. Good. And what is the Revachal Citizens Militia? Nothing more nor less than the de facto law enforcement body of post-revolutionary Revachal, Detective. Yes, we are the Revachal Citizens Militia. Are we? We are. You said de facto? Yes, that means not de jure. The RCM acts in what is poetically called the Twilight of International Law, both at the behest of the coalition government and to its chagrin. That's it for the who I am part then. Permit me to conclude with this. Who you are to me is the police, the only legitimate law enforcement authority in Revachol. And if those authorities drink so hard they need help recalling the basic terms of reality, well, I am here to help. What is... A strange coldness comes over you as you look at the world. The waves sway the sloop slowly. That's all. Uh, what times are these? These are unimportant times, Detective. You and I were born after the dust had settled. A thousandth of a second too late. Too late for what? For the big time. The smile of a predator. No doubt what she's got in mind. You've got a predatory streak. All men are predators, dear. Nothing much to be done about that. It's all a matter of where you get to file your teeth. It's the big time. The revolution. Ha, and what is this revolution I keep hearing about? It's quite easy. Every hundred years or so, our species gets together to decide what's next, who gets shot in the head, and who gets the mineral rights. It's a real kerfuffle. Would you say it was a bunch of apes duking it out? Why, of course. We're talking Duke Out Central. Full swing, intraspecies warfare. And the apes? Were they evil? No. I would say the apes were neutral. Sounds like evil to me. On the other hand, maybe you're right. It's enough about the times. They are what they are. Who knows? An afterbloom may yet come. Anyway. Enough sentimentality. Is there anything else you want to know? Um, what are you? What I am not is a basic term of reality. Everyone wants to talk about themselves. She will, in time. What is this acute encephalopathy? It's a neurological disorder caused by a lack of vitamin B in the brain. Symptoms include a retrograde amnesia. It's quite serious. You should get yourself checked out. She conveys it in short, cold bursts, trying not to invest too deeply in the condition of this doomed detective. What causes encephalopathy? Well, it's either bariatric surgery or long-term alcohol use. Oh, it's definitely the drinking. She nods slowly. What this boils down to is, this reality thing is stupid. Blow this joint, grab a bottle, and drain that shit right <laughs> down your throat. 
Wait, wait. This reality thing is the only game in town. It's probably in your interest not to blow it. She stares at you, head tilted to the side, with a slightly concerned look on her face. What's this? A bird? A spenicid? A flightless bird of the polar regions? Am I really that awkward? Of course you're not, my dear. I'm just terrible at guessing games. I meant, what is this place? Here. Ah. This is the pier of Rue de saint Gislaine, 33A, where the tenants have been kind enough to rent me a slot or two. What is Rue de saint Gislaine, 33A? A pre-revolutionary tenement. Old buildings are called tenements, you see. And new buildings, bâtiments. After les bâtiments nouveaux. But 33A and 33B are not nouveau. They're old. This one used to be eight to ten stories tall. A real high rise by the standards of the last century. Built to mirror the skyscrapers across the bay in the delta. That was before the war, of course. Mostly Who lived the them. middle class, lived in them. I believe. <laughs> this was once primo real estate. Before the cannons lock four or five stories off. Splat, splat. You could be wrong, but from here it appears as if she's running the brush across her throat in a soaring motion. Wonderful. Where are we? We're in Martinez, baby. Baby. A casual term of endearment popular among the 50 plus crowd. It's a disco holdover, pay it no heed. I'm a disco holdover myself. <laughs> Aren't we all? Mm hmm. And what is Martinez? Martinez is a district of Revachol. A very small district tucked away near the industrial harbor, north of the 881 and Jamrock. You would be excused for not knowing about it. Unimportant, they say. Forgotten, even. Shelled to smithereens during the revolution. It has its charms, just not this time of year. You mentioned a sea. What sea is this? It's not really a sea. It's the Bay of Revachol. And the bay feeds into the ocean. Are we near the ocean? Yes. We are on an island in an ocean. The world's largest body of water. The Insulindic. Vast. Lukewarm and unknowable. Flowing in and out of sight. Tell me about another, perhaps even more, fundamental aspect of reality. I would be happy to. What is a preposterously expensive education for, if not sharing? Actually, I thought that was going to lead to something else. So, I guess that's all for now. Glad to have been of assistance. The little that I know. Of course, detective. Take care. Alright, that was a whole heck of a load of talk. Uh, I was thinking I'd be able to get more done in that session. But yeah, the conversation with her lasts quite some time. And I spent a lot of time in the bookstore, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, next time I'll talk to all the lorry drivers and maybe Everart player for this time. So, likes, comments, always appreciated. Till next time, bye for now.